Following up from yesterday's video, make sure to go and check it out if you haven't done so already because there's quite a lot of information in that video that I'm also going to be quoting on here. So make sure you are fully aware of everything that's happened with Amanda Slavery yesterday so we can get into this. But you might have seen it on social media. There's quite a lot that came out this morning about the likes of Amanda Slavery and Jamie Wu and actually both being resigned slash terminated, quite a strong word there, terminated from the board of directors with Downey who is now coming in to take his place. Straight up now, guys, it's an absolute pile of bollocks. I'm not even going to put up at all. Now, I've actually spent hours recording the video going into this, and then all of a sudden, I've triple-checked them. You think I went back on social media, I went onto the, the company houses, and it's not true at all. It is quite literally not true, and it's annoyed me, and it's got under my skin while there's fans out there that are actually posting this with no context on social media to thousands of people and all of a sudden uh, these ITK accounts, I've had enough of them. Uh, it's actually pissed me off this morning, the people going out and doing this. Cause I I've spent a good amount of time looking at it. It's not true at all and I'm going to just expose them for what they are. A pile of rubbish. So if you go out to company houses based on those screenshots straight away, yeah, they have resigned as directors. You might be thinking, well, okay, how can that be incorrect? So basically, according to any castinated source that's been questioned about this, they've came out and said that Amanda Stavely has resigned from over 20 companies inside the castinated. But a lot of these companies are dormant. And what it means by dormant is, is that these companies just don't do anything. The companies don't basically don't exist. So Amanda's went and resigned from all these little companies that she has no part in because these companies don't do a thing at the castle. So that is the area where they've been removed by directors, uh, just... Just a company that doesn't matter inside the Castanet. If you look on their accounts, they are still directors of the club itself. So straight away, uh, there's Dow News is coming in for Amanda, Jamie, all this going on in the background. It's just factually incorrect. So these posts on social media, and I don't want to pick on mouth for the time, but it, this post is not true. It is simply not true because they have not been removed by directors. And I, I've actually had a video where I, I basically... Um, was almost going on, going in favour of this, but it, it's not happening at all. It's straight up not happening. I've had to go and triple check everything. It's just, it's simply not the case. So straight up now, when you guys are looking on social media, just be careful what you see, because even though someone, when you look at those screenshots straight away, you see on the company houses that they've been removed by directors, look into it more, because they have been removed by directors, yes, but from dormant companies. So if you look into it more, you can actually find out for yourselves that it's simply not the case that they been removed by Newcastle. I think Amanda especially, there's quite a few question marks surrounding her due to the fact that, of course, recently now, something I haven't actually mentioned in my video yesterday is that uh, she's been in multiple court cases, so it's not just the one with, with Mike Ash. There was also one with a Greek tycoon company who believed that Amanda owes them over £3 million from several years ago. So they took Amanda's stay with the court. Uh, the jury believes the tycoon company. Amanda has to then pay up the money and it's even got said in the court itself that Amanda's defence team or excuses just weren't up to scratch. They just they didn't believe at all, basically. So uh, Amanda has to pay out that money. On top of that, she's also had to pay £1.2 million in court fees. So she has to do all that for her defence team and everything going on there. So someone that, if you compare to the likes of the PIA, even the Ruben brothers, Amanda's equity is not high. Uh, she has 10% in the club before she starts selling shares. But she doesn't have the finances to put into that 10%. So they have to reshuffle around the club. And Amanda has always said, even when joining the club, she's always said that I'm going to have to sell up my shares eventually. So my current understanding is that now Amanda owns 6% of Newcastle. Eh? So she's sold 4%. The PAF now owns 84%. Ruben Bull has 10 Amanda 6 So gradually over time, Amanda's percentage will continue to go down. But she'll still have an active part on a day-to-day -day basis. So, one thing yesterday, I think, again, you guys seem to misunderstand is whether Amanda will be leaving the club. Despite losing shares in the club, Amanda, to my understanding, will still operate her day-to-day -day duty. She'll still be doing her job as if nothing has changed. So, don't think straight away because she's selling shares up that she's going to be out of the castle. Uh, in my personal opinion, that's not going to happen at all. She'll continue to do her duties because it's always been the long-term plan that Amanda would sell her shares anyway to the payer because payer obviously has the big bulk of the money and they'll pump the money in the club. Whereas Amanda, you could argue, is almost the PR for the payer. She'll come out in the media. She'll do all the interviews for them. She'll do the day-to-day duty. She'll operate everything. She'll make sure everyone's doing their job. But straight away, 
Uh, if you go on to her companies, Amanda Stavely, it is true that she has resigned from over 20 companies at the Cassie United. But most of these, according to a Newcastle United source, are all dormant. So these companies basically do not matter. So I feel like it's a good opportunity to come out in this video now and just to shut down everything they're saying in social media. They even caught me out somewhat, even caught me out as well. So uh, uh, please don't fall into that trap. I've, I've had a good chance now looking at it. I know it's not true. Amanda, Jamie, they're both still on the board. Down is still on the board. Everyone's on the board, basically. They've only been resigned from dormant companies inside the club that don't matter at all. They don't matter in regards to anything. They just they don't exist, basically. So uh, I thought I'd come out in this video now and address it. It caught me out a little bit. I've got a feeling it caught pretty much all of you out as well. So just don't believe his IT care accounts. Even if you see stuff in company houses, don't just jump on it straight away and just assume, oh, God, they're, they're being terminated, they're being executed <laughs> off the bloody board. They haven't, nothing's happened on the board. They're still on the board. I just wanted to come out now and mention that because I had, I had to literally re-record the entire video because it even caught me out as well. So just don't fall into that trap. I had a chance to look into everything. So, yeah, it's been a bloody nightmare, to say the least. But, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad they're still on. That's what I'm going to say now. I'm glad nothing's changed drastically. I had a feeling, of course, from the court cases. So, it would have made sense somewhat, actually, if it, were, if it did come out after the court case that Amanda had all of a sudden res, uh, resigned from the board because of the fact that she could potentially, uh, obviously, be falling under bankruptcy. So, uh, that did worry me somewhat at first, actually. So, the timing of it as well kind of kind of feels somewhat correct. So, it could have been someone that was quite plausible when you when you look into it. But, uh, no, it just hasn't happened at all. And that's the, the good part from it. Um still got our own eyes we still got everything regards to everything it's always like a a bit of a nothing story but because of how much traction is gained, the fact it's had media reports and the fact that i think a lot of you guys as well would have probably seen it and go whoa what, what is going on here it would have got a big reaction out of people so straight away i want to shut down now for what it is an absolute pile of rubbish so please 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 do not believe it but yeah it did catch me out at first actually but in regards to injuries, before we finish things off, there has been a bit of news in regards to injuries. Uh, Craig Corp, of course, reported yesterday after my video that Joe Willick is now out for the rest of the season. Joe Willick's a player that concerns me somewhat because he's played one full 90 this season. One full 90 is just nowhere near good enough, is it? So uh, that's one that definitely makes me twitch a little bit. And if you look into the potential FFP sales, player sales that we desperately need in the summer, Joe Willick's a player with high value. He doesn't start in Newcastle, his best 11. He's someone that, as much as I don't want to see him go, I want to see Willick stay. I wouldn't necessarily be that arse if he goes. and get good money for him now. I think Achilles injuries always tend to make a player worse as well. So it's something that you do have to be a bit concerned by. But yeah, as much as I love Willick, I think he could potentially be one that we could actually see go on this summer if this injury issue seems to be a bit of a reoccurring problem. Callum Wilson, speaking of injuries, Callum Wilson is now back in training, Mr. Injury Man himself. Um, I love Wilson as a player, but honestly, this guy is, is one of the worst injury-prone players I've ever seen for Newcastle. So he's back, he's going to be in training now, and hopefully he can come back at some point. Isak plays 60 70 minutes on the pitch, Wilson can come on and give uh, Alexander Isak a bit of a rest. And I'm thinking as well, as much as I like Wilson again, he's probably a player we're going to have to let go in the summer. Martin Debraga seems to be a player that is a bit unhappy with his current position at the club. Despite being the current number one, he knows that once Nick Pope is back, he'll be that number two. And he's just someone that doesn't seem to be happy with. The more, my impression is, is that Debraga and Karius are both probably likely to leave in the summer. And Karius is going to go back to Italy according to his wife. And Debraga is always someone that wants regular first team football despite his age, which he's just not going to get at the castle. So the likeliest is both of them are going to leave. And Nick Port will be our number one. <coughs> Mark Gillespie, honestly, uh, the most luckiest FO on the planet, is probably going to be still at the club over at Forts. And maybe one or two goalkeepers coming in for backup. But yeah, they're the main injury issues I want to look into. As for Newcastle, I want to address everything I could there. Apologies if you guys feel like there's not, not been too much that's came out in regards to Amanda, Jamie. But again, a lot of people have been talking about this. It's been all over social media. And I want to just cut it down for what it is. An absolute pile of rubbish. It, it gets under my skin quite a lot when people just don't research at all and people just straight away, boom, 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 boom. It's just, no. And I had a good chance to look into it. It's just not true at all. So please, 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 as I said, don't fall into that trap. But appreciate you watching, guys. Take care. Wish you all the best and we'll see you all in the next one.